game you have. Yeah. No human has a, like a, experiences emotions deeper because they have more recognition. No, that's the crazy thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. We just free ourselves in that now, understanding that there's no level or point in your life. There's no hierarchy where suddenly you're free of any yep. negative yeah. emotions. Yep. Like. Welcome to the worst show. Cause it's the worst show. Yeah. Hey. All right. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, I'm Kyle the Worst, and we got fuck tanks. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we got Moon over here, the co-host. He's dope as fuck. Uh, today, we got two special guests. We're going to jump right into this. They're awesome people. A lot of good energy. Uh, why don't you guys introduce yourselves? That was a nice intro. Thank you. But I'm working on it. You switched up so quick. That was so nice. <laughs> <laughs> you switched up so quick. <laughs> It's like, oh my God, we're gonna so like sweet. throw Thank a flashback in right <laughs> now worry. of what you were doing. I mean, I'm filming, right? Yeah, this okay, whole time. So you know what to intro with yeah. then. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what's good. You Absolutely. know what's good. I'm Kaylin Yvonne, um, and I am kind of a longtime friend of Terrence's. We met back in the day at Mizzou. Yeah, yeah. 20, 2016, maybe. I think so. I met you through Jared, my boyfriend, um, which is kind of what brought me here today. I'm Kaylin. I am many things. I am. She is. I'll, I'll answer with that. I am. Damn. I don't know if I can. Damn. You can't. <laughs> I am that with a different name I present myself with. I was going to say, how do you follow up to that? <laughs> you just follow. You, you fall back is what you do. Uh, you surrender, which we'll be talking mm. a lot about. Sheesh. That will come up. That will come up. Can't wait. To this is so um, profound. I can't even take it. Like, I need yeah, another dude, I'm, I'm speechless right now. I'll take it. Yeah. Hey, cheers. 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 Oh my yeah. God. To oh my God. <laughs> the worst bored. podcast. Um, so <sighs> I'm Clotilda Sabia tomorrow. Amen. But if we really want to get authentic about it. Yeah. Clotilda Sabia de Mao. Mm. That's literally and how I said it. I've never I've never heard that one before, <laughs> but that's so new for me. Um but yes, uh Cl I'm Clotilda. I also am. What do you do, you. Clotilda? <laughs> yeah. Um, I like I really like I've been figuring out how to answer this best. I think I answer it differently every time. But I one, I like to go where instinctually I feel like I want to go. So I like to do so many things. Um, but in the present moment, that's music, singing, um, videography, and I just started officially started my production company slash organization, one day label, uh, big couch. So it's actually very the the uh the symbol, the icon, what is it? Logo. The logo. The, the logo. Symbol, the icon. What is it? I will, like, to this day, I cannot, whenever I, you know those words that you search for and you lose, logo for me is one of them. That's okay. Really? Um, but I'm changing the narrative. I'm actually really good at finding that word. Logo is my favorite word. And my logo is, <laughs> is a big red couch. Is a big red couch. Very serendipitous. Because yeah. there's yeah. room for everyone. So that's yeah. the, that's. I like it. And mean? it's inviting. What the yeah. Fuck yeah. Is, that's the, yep. We're just yep. gonna we're gonna act like we know what serendipitous means. Just go with it. Bro. What does that mean? Listen, it's a new word in my vocabulary. I've been saying it to everyone it? and everything. Can you describe what, babes, what is it? Babes and serendipitous. Oh <laughs> serendipitous is basically like a synonym for magical. Like when like and euphoric. Um, euphoric, mm. like like when things happen. The fact that her production company is called Big Couch, and here a big couch is, uh, it's not a coincidence, yeah. right? It's yeah. it's intention behind it. It's um like you know a it's miracle fate. maybe faded faded's good serendipitous. It's got faded. a lot of serendipitous. Wait, serendipitous and faded. Serendipitous. <laughs> faded. Fated. Oh, <laughs> faded. I'm like faded and serendipitous. Like tiger. Kind of the same out. thing maybe. Like serendipitous. <laughs> yeah. Wow, profound. So yeah, no, that's, that's who we awesome. are, and together Ooh, we are a we whole. Are. Yeah, together. Kaylin and Clotilde separately we are. amazing. Together, it's a whole yeah. other being, which I'm, I'm sure will be shown. Yeah, you'll experience through this. It, we are. From we what are. I've gotten so far, it's kind of like the Tasmanian devil. Oh, <laughs> like it's that energy, Just but good. Going. Like positive Tasmanian. Tasmanian angels. Yes. You know the Missourian angels. Two, two, two. Holy Ooh, shit. Love that. Two, two, two. Two, two, two. two, two. But it, really, <laughs> I was I wasn't gonna take it there, but like, we'll oh, take he, it there. he always goes there. It's... One of us has to. Wait, what flavor is that one? I can't tell you. It's a special flavor. This blueberry. one's strawberry. I'm allergic blueberry. to strawberry. That's, That's why I was like, only blueberry one. You're allergic, I'm allergic to, to strawberry? strawberry. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, tell us about that. How do you feel How, about that? Yeah. 
Because that's a pretty popular fruit. Yeah. Really. I mean, it definitely sucks. Have you ever even tasted one? I mean, no. Wow. Really? Whenever, whenever I was like a baby, I had something with strawberries. You're not missing out. I hate strawberries. How allergic on a scale from one to 10? Like, is it like, Ugh, no, I, I will die. Ugh. Oh, okay. Yeah. So <laughs> 11. Yeah. One time I had like some, uh, some fruit snacks and I had like a strawberry one and my eyes got super swollen. Like I couldn't see anything. Artificially see, flavored shit. I was going to say it's yeah. surprising that the artificially flavored stuff even impacts you. That yeah. means a real strawberry. Wait, so what does that say about so allergies right that we react to even this, the artificial the fakeness. Mm. The fake. Well, they must yeah. like put a little bit of like the dash of the real in it. Do they? Or your like, brain thinks or, it's strawberry. So it, it allergically reacts. Or the fake is fake. So it's even worse than the real thing. Oh, or that the synthetic. It's like strawberry K2. Have My you guys. My brain does not move as fast <laughs> as y'all are talking. Have you guys ever heard of the real real? It does not. Yes. I am so interested in that website. I just still cannot no, afford yes. any I'm of it. Yes. In it's like Pornhub. Gucci. <laughs> so it's, it's basically a resale. It's to it's e-commerce. I actually think they might have a few flagship stores in like maybe LA, yeah. New York. But it's e-commerce resale, all designer. The thing is, is that because it's designer, it's higher end stuff. It's more expensive. Yeah. But they have so many items on their site. If you go on the sales section. And it takes a while to look through, but you can find some good stuff for a decent I'm price. Trying to, I'm trying to find like that $20 sweater. That's you can Gucci. do that. It might not be Gucci, but it'll be, it'll be it'll another be something. design. Uh, I love listening to her talk about fashion. That's, that's like, that's what made me think bird. about I it. Think I it's, like, my, it's, it's my, passion. right now in this chapter, my biggest passion, my biggest driver. It has been my entire life, I feel like, but I'm finally within the past five or six years since Yvonne Mitchell started, I feel like really stepped into that. But you've always just like about it all day. loved clothes and like had like a passion for always. it. Always. Yeah. I listen, I be telling Chloe. My memory is not the greatest, so I don't be remembering a lot. Yeah. But like intentionally on purpose. Like she knows how to like really just like anything that happened that she didn't like gone over <laughs> out out Pisces. Out. But one of the very few <laughs> memories I have from my childhood is playing dress up in my mom's closet, and I still remember specific items. Like there's this one one shoulder top with a big rose on it that I would I was I was like two three in her closet just playing dress up. That's that was my favorite thing to do, and I feel like. Um, Fashion is my favorite way to express myself, always has been. So I don't know. It's just, it's it's always been there for me. I just didn't realize I could turn it into my life yeah, until right. it like it happened through Yvonne Mitchell. And I was like, wait, you really can just do what you want yeah. and do what you love and, and make it your life. In it doesn't this, have to be yeah, a, a side A lot of people thing. don't realize that though. In this day and age, you can literally just attach yourself to one thing. Yes. Just fucking learn it, like stick yes. with it. I think it's the, I don't know what the like whole theory or whatever it is, but it's like you start something, you suck at it. Mm -hmm. And it's just so yes. discouraging that you yes. don't want to <laughs> do it anymore. Dude, yeah. We talk about this all the time. You know what it is? Our mind, there's limits to some of it, but mostly our mind is limitless, especially if we practice yeah. through like meditation and stuff. And so whenever drugs. we have an idea come into our, into our heads, it's limitless. We have this picture perfect idea of what we want to execute, but actually executing it in yeah. the physical reality in real life is hard. And the only way to get to that mental image is through practice and frustration and not being perfect it's right away. It's it's trial trial people. It's trial yes. Error. Yeah. Yes. And it's the lack of appreciation for that process mm, itself. Like yes. people do do always are looking I have the process over results tattooed on. Oh. Amen. Show the camera. Amen. So Show bad. the camera. Zoom bad. in. <laughs> I could still see I'm editing our last podcast episode right now. Uh -huh. And you can see his blue and his hair in it. So well, I'm green, excited so. to show that. I love it. I told him earlier. I thought it was yeah. the lights for a second no. until he actually. I like how you question it and then realize it. It's yeah. that it's real. It's <laughs> part of the magic. I think he just needs to bleach like a stripe down the middle Ooh. and it'll look like the airbender. Like a full hot airbender arrow. Oh, Do an yeah. arrow. And he's what's all the airbender's name, you posers. Avatar. I am what just here to support name? your I anime. I, um, I didn't watch it Jimmy, like that. Little Jimmy. <laughs> wow, it was really close. Jimmy Cooks. <laughs> that was it. No, it's really? not. No, it's Anne. Oh, wow. <laughs> His name is Anne. I was going to say, that's, yeah. that's what that Drake song's it's named after? Right. Yeah. Yeah. She's my favorite, though. That's why. Yeah, that's I, like his old she's like, girlfriend. Yeah, something like that. She was for the streets, she's, she's a bad bitch. Katara's she was, a bad bitch. She was for the streets. Who's that's, for the no, streets? Whoa. Katara was oh, for right. the streets, bro. Yeah, whoa. What kind of misogynistic... Uh, she was talking to somebody from the fire village. She, that's because she was for the bitch. fire. She was for the fire, not the streets. Yeah, and she understood the dark side. And I she understood that... What was his face from the fire side? He doesn't even know. He, he doesn't watch cute. anime. He's a poser. I don't know if I can say he that. He was kind of cute. His eye was fucked up. His eye was burnt off. Hell what are you yeah. talking about? He seen some shit. Danger. That's right. character. Right. That's right. Danger. That's yeah. character. Yeah. It's like scars on the face. And he's he like more attractive, mysterious. Is he really? Yeah. I believe His that. His name is Aang, though. But who is the fire guy? 
Zhang? Uh, no. It was something like Zuko. That. It's Prince, Zuko. Prince Zuko. Zuko. Yeah. I, I'm, Katara I'm understood him, and that's what the feminine is for. You watch anime too? No. Um, just Avatar. I, I started. Mm. I never thought I'd like it, and I started on it, and I was like, "Wow." When did you start it? It just got to Netflix. Did you start it when it got on Netflix? I started like it's last year, really yeah. late. He's gonna call you a poser. Just got, yeah, this. call me poser. I don't. I yeah, don't. come on. I mean, yeah. I can't call you poser because Avatar is not anime. Stop I've been it. wanting to get into anime. Really? And if if you're into it, I will, I will take I, suggestions. I am into. I'm it. actually the biggest anime. Okay, tell Kaylin and I. Wait, He's wait, a wait, fucking poser. Don't listen to him. Tell me when I should start with. I've never. I I watched Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball Z. That's Kaylin and I are the are the girls who tell everyone face. that loves anime Good luck. that we want to get started on it. You can't take I've had Goku, this conversation bro. Before. <laughs> Bitch. I'm literally fucking, He's a fucking Goku poser. and a living being. I think that we He's a to fucking watch poser. It. No, bro, because I told someone this Suck yesterday. Right, right. Like, you just tell me when to watch and I'm there. Call me out then. It would have happened by now. get back to this. But yeah. maybe this is really locking and loading it in. The timing's right. The timing's right. Dragon yeah. Ball Z. Is oh. that a game or a card? Dragon Ball Z? Or is I think you're game? thinking of Yu-Gi-Oh. Yes, that was a card game. Wasn't Dragon Ball Z a game a as well? Too. I mean, most of the time they make video games based off of like TV shows or some other form of okay. like identity. Like it's Harry like Potter's got a anything. video game. True. Maybe that's maybe that's what huh? there's of. cards for anything. I feel like like everything. there's baseball True. cards. That's True. where baseball started. True. They were making cards. <laughs> dude, cards are a hot commodity right now. You get the yeah, right Pokemon, dude. you get yeah. one mil. You're talking like mil. Gary V right now. Three mil. I keep I mine am, close to my chest. I am the, the generation's <laughs> yeah. next Gary mm-hmm. V. We love a good Gary V moment. Same, same. Yeah. Actually, though, I watched an interview of him. I can't remember what he was on. That was the first time I ever watched him in long form. And the stuff that he was talking about <laughs> is the same stuff that we were just talking about a minute ago with passion and yep. like, yeah. you know. No, and he like he's been the preacher of that ever since he started like Wine Library. See, it, okay, it's crazy. He he's said the same shit over and over again, and he can still like say what he's saying now, and like he'll clip it from like ten years ago mm-hmm. and be like, "I've been saying this shit. Mm-hmm. It's just like I wasn't as big then as I am now. People were calling me a phony then, but I'm still saying the same shit." And that's what being authentic is. It's just staying true to your beliefs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's why he's so fucking massive now. I think I had this, like, misconception of him because I only learned of him recently, maybe within the yeah. past few years. You think he was, he like, cracked up. out? Almost. Well, I just really thought he was more, like, <laughs> business-minded of yeah. just, you know, hustle, hustle, don't stop right. type thing. But I didn't realize how he touched on passion and, like, the whether he calls it spiritual or not the spirituality aspect of yeah. it you know i just had this misconception but my my mom gets his texts like his mass texts really she subscribes she subscribes that's, surprising. that's fucking bad yeah. and, and and so he will text like um you're amazing you're a killer you're awesome mm. and she got this one text and i forget what it was it was a little bit more on the intimate side of <laughs> his text really it was, it was like hey I love you so much. Like, get a good night's rest tonight. And I'm like, yo, it's my dad. <laughs> He's like, who the fuck is Gary? Right. <laughs> Literally. Is that the time for that? Gary, time for my who birth control. The, is Gary. Birth control. Hold on, hold on. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, important, important, uh, important. Go on. Is that for that camera, yeah. actually? Don't skip it. I'm here in my mouth. You got it? Uh, you got it, champ. You know Make it. You know what's crazy? What? What you said earlier about Gary Vee saying, like, I've, I've said this stuff before. Hold he reposts, like, old these. videos. <laughs> yeah. How how long stuff lives on the internet? Like, we're mm-hmm. just now witnessing yeah. it because it's so early on. But I think about that often with the stuff that we post for our business or the stuff that you create and post on your TikTok and your Instagram. Yeah. It's stuff that you'll get to show your children. And it will and live on forever. And yeah. the, the aftermath of it is so far beyond what we can see. We look for those immediate results. Yeah. But it'll be... I mean, this stuff is so new. Years I, down the line, we'll still we'll still be seeing the return on that. It's insane. I this is like so freaking important. And <clears throat> this week, for the first time ever, I never look back on old videos. Once in a blue freaking moon. But I like to like come from a place where I'm always creating new ideas. And so I don't want to like go back on a past version of myself, even if it did really well or like was a good video in my opinion. I just like to keep creating from a new place. So I never yeah. look back. Mm-hmm ever on old videos however i'm working on a project right now that requires me go through every single one of my past tiktoks and so i've been having to binge clotilde content for literally the last three days every single part of my journey do you cringe whenever you watch old stuff the crazy thing is i cringed when i made those videos and i'm realizing looking back 
that was dope. That message is dope. Because it was, that it, was, it was awesome. you at that moment. That's it was where like, the, it was very yeah. authentic and you in that yes. moment. So. And I'm looking back and I'm like, I would get in my head about a certain amount of likes a video got or something. Because I think people don't realize that when your audience grows, the pressure gets higher because yeah. yep. let's say you're yep. posting uh, from a brand new TikTok account, no followers. You might, it just might be going into the void. People aren't seeing it. But the pressure might increase when the audience gets bigger because it's like in your head, oh, more people are seeing this and even less are approving of it. Like yeah. mm -hmm. it's a different kind yeah. of pressure, mm -hmm. I feel like. And so I was getting in my head back then of like, and sometimes even still now, I deleted a video yesterday. Like you still go through these phases and you're like, who, like yeah. what, who cares? You're human, you're human. Exactly. Um, and all these videos that back then I thought either weren't funny or weren't that insightful or were weird or whatever, but I, I left them up because I constantly challenged myself, leave it up, leave it up, leave it up. It's going to hurt, leave it up. And then wait till the next day, mm -hmm. the feeling will pass. You'll get over it, whatever. And I'm looking back at these old videos and I'm like, I'm laughing so hard at some of the shit I was saying. And there's not that many likes or whatever it is. Yeah. And I'm like, this is such a testament or like something that I thought wasn't that insightful or didn't make much sense, but I left it up. I'm like hitting, hitting, makes mm -hmm. sense, inspirational. And I'm like, damn, that's so crazy. Cause my perception back then was either that- Judgmental, yes. cringe. Yeah. I'm yeah. so happy like I pushed past it though. Yeah. Because yeah. looking back now, I'm like, this was all fire. <laughs> like you know what? I actually heard a creator say this today. I was watching a podcast, um, a person on TikTok, and they were saying that they remember around like 70 to 100 people that were following them from the very start. People that like are writers for them. Yeah. And I mean, I think they have over a million followers now. Right. And they said, even to this day, they remind themselves I'm only creating content, one for myself, stuff that I like and that I think is funny that I would enjoy. But then also for those 70 people that I still know, I, when I see their names, I remember them. And as long as they're happy past that, I, there's like a certain boundary and a certain number yes. that you just have to Dude, yes. that's turn it so off. fucking yes. valuable honestly like right? because you start to look at all the negative comments and yes. shit and you like you're gonna forget that like there is a base of what you started and that theme and that continuity to yes. what you were making for them mm -hmm. and like as long as you keep making that if, if your following's growing that you're doing something right yeah but it's whenever the hate starts to disrupt your pattern and you're like oh i need to change up what i'm yes. fucking doing and shit but you, you stay you, true to those people you form because you want yeah. To, yeah well you want you acceptance want likes, you want... our whole yeah. like genetics are based off of acceptance mm -hmm. you know like reproduction itself you have to be accepted by somebody yep. to reproduce and shit so it's like that's what is embedded into our dna so it's easy to get caught up in that that's so true yeah. the irony of it all is like deep down you want more recognition but then you get re that recognition and with that it's inevitable that you get more critique yeah you know, and it's such a balance. Yes. I always say like, we're, we're creators by nature. So every time we fulfill a desire, a new desire will come in. And so I feel like my, I've been figuring out how to balance that no matter what it is. Like Miley, I was, I, I referenced this interview so often. I referenced <laughs> anyone, the Miley, knows, anyone knows which one it is. It's the Miley Cyrus, Joe Rogan interview. Oh, I don't know one. why, for good whatever one. reason, it's my reference point on life now after watching it. Really? That's the Dolly Parton good quote one. that I got about the press on nails. Just I can't that, stop referencing this interview. Yes. <laughs> See, like, it's gone to a point where my friends are like, yo, yo. <laughs> like, shut up. <laughs> you gotta shut up. But she does not check the stats on her music because she's like, yes, maybe I got 10 million likes or whatever in a song. There's 3 billion people in the world. Yeah. Your standards will always change. People don't realize that. Mm -hmm. That like Ariana Grande, so let's say one of her songs went number one last week, but then her next album goes number 10. That's yeah. just a new standard for her. She's experiencing the same emotions as we are. Yep. Not on a larger scale, the same the scale. Same. We all have the same emotional scale. No, no matter how much fame you have, yeah. no human has a, like a, experiences emotions deeper because they have more recognition. No, that's the crazy thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. We just free ourselves in that now, understanding that there's no level or point in your life. There's no hierarchy where suddenly you're free of any yep. negative yeah. emotions. Yep. Like, you know, you're just gonna be experiencing different experiences and every time you fulfill one desire, new desires will pour in. It's not a bad thing. Everything mm -hmm. plateaus once you feel that like amazingness, it's yeah. still gonna plateau. There's no like you're next level else. of you're that. Yeah, yeah. Next exactly. Thing, you know? yeah. I want something else before I even finish. Cause like whenever I make videos, like I always, I, cause I, like as an artist, I hate all my videos. <laughs> As like a creator, it's like. Why do you say you hate them? Because I'm so hard on myself. Mm -hmm. He's the biggest critique. Yeah, which I'm the I feel like a lot critic. of artists are yeah. like yeah. your own biggest yeah. critic. So it's like. Yeah. It's, that's I don't go back and watch them because I cringe so hard because I was like, 
every time I rewatch them, like I'm always like, oh, I should have done that, or I could have done this, or like it could have been just like so much better, and I could have done all mm-hmm. these like other different things. But like right now, I'm working on this documentary that I've restarted three times, and like I already want the next video. Like I want to move on mm-hmm. from it, and like I'm trying to be like more work on being like more present. Yeah. And not think about like what's next. Like, what am I going to do next? And I'm always like, damn, like, like what am I going to do next, next, next? Yeah. But there's just so many other things that I want to do and like get started on. It's so hard not well, to. I think also with just like, and this is something I've been dealing with making my documentary right now. Yeah. It's like you have this hunk, this block that you know is going to be Michelangelo in the end. Yeah. But right now it's still that hunk. Yeah. And you're going to have days where you're like, what the fuck even is this? Mm-hmm. And you want to get off your computer. And then mm-hmm. you're going to have those moments. Hitting, hitting, oh my fucking God. And it feels yeah. like you're on top of the world and you're buzzing, you're buzzing. And then you're confused again. But I know that when the product comes together, you're going to be so freaking happy. Yeah. You took the time, whether days, months, people take years sometimes. Yeah. There are scientists who came up with theories that took like thir- up to 30 years yeah. for them to figure out and then write a book. And now everyone's like, oh my God, Plato was insane. Yeah. Yeah. Plato took so long on that theory, which by the way, we're talking, have you heard of the theory, uh, Plato's theory of ideas? No. That all of our ideas exist in like a spiritual realm where everything is perfect because that's where we create yeah. from. But we live in a physical one. Yeah. So it takes time for those ideas to transit to the physical. So you, you start writing a song, no idea where it's going to go. You know it's, it could be good, but you don't. It, and then one day over time, it ends up being what it is in your mind. But it took time to get there to move through the physical and through mm-hmm. all the different variables we have here. Like eventually, you're going to have to get up and go to the bathroom, shit, eat, pee, sleep. You'll get tired while editing your documentary. Yeah. Something's going to happen. It's going to impede your process on some level. Mm-hmm. But eventually, with enough diligence and Practice. discipline and compassion for yourself in the process, you'll get to that Michelangelo in the end. And yeah. trusting, you know, what does your film look like without the potential approval it might get, without money being a factor, anything? Yeah. What does it look mm-hmm. like to you? And how will you allow yourself I feel like to get I'm, there? I feel like I'm the person that impedes my own process 90% yeah. well, of the time. Let me ask you this. How much of while you're editing and going through that process, do you go, this is what value I'm getting out of this process mm-hmm. alone? Like, mm-hmm. I, I, I would look at the videos and be like, at the end of end result, you get to look back on like this is all the things I just got to learn from this video, yes. and that's what this video Even means if this to never me. Never gets made. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's dope. That's kind of what I've been feeling going through like my old videos of me singing right now because my documentary is like very music focused, and it's empowered me so much because I've improved so much. So as as cringy as it is for me to watch myself like try and sing and try and get my voice there. Yeah. I'll like what I've been doing is I'll listen to myself sing a song in the video, and I take my headphone out and I sing it out loud to myself now, and I'm like, damn. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You practiced enough that you really got here. Like Dude, that's dope. So literally. even if this documentary, like it's gonna get made, but let's say if it didn't, like grounding yourself in the process, like mm-hmm. we were talking about, yeah. and there being as much joy in that. Yeah. And I mean, especially with an art like film, like each one that you make is a footprint that you get to look back on yeah. and see all those stages. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, You're gonna I, be so I, grateful I was, for that. I was going through like my <laughs> all my old pictures on like my uh, photography account. And I was going through them with Kyle the other day, and it was just like so cringe. But it was like, and I fucked with them though. Yeah, but it was that's like, the thing. I it was fucked like so with so authentically them. me. Like yeah, I don't regret right? any of it. Like I've right? never, I've never deleted a picture on that page. I like, I have like over a thousand pictures posted on that page. And like in the very beginning, whenever I had that page, it was like just an anonymous account, and I had like no followers, and it was like private. But I would post like yeah. every single night. Wow. You know well, what? Yeah. It's okay to cringe because yeah. you know what that cringe represents. That represents growth that yeah, you now yeah, yeah. you've you've grown as an artist as a person. So now you have higher expectations of yourself, and you've set the bar higher for yourself. That you look back and you're like, whoa, that that is that is lower than what I'm creating right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how do you guys feel like? How do you like surrender to that? To being someone's really passionate and has high standards for themselves, but also really wants to enjoy life and where they're at right now. How do you guys do that? Uh, I mean, I struggle with it all the fucking time. You what? I struggle with it a lot. I feel like I, I'm just very bad at being present because, like I said, I'm always thinking about what's next. Mm-hmm. So it's 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 like an everyday struggle for me. Mm-hmm. I try to stay focused on everything that happens leads you exactly to mm-hmm. where you're supposed to be. Like, Amen. and even to like those photos, 
in a perspective like this, if one of those photos weren't taken, do you have a favorite photo you've ever taken in your yeah. life? That photo wouldn't have happened if those, mm, if right. one of those other right. photos yeah. hadn't right. been taken, because mm-hmm. that is how like the world works. Everything that you do, Absolutely. it equals to everything that becomes. Doesn't and, that's so free? Yeah, yeah, it's fucking amazing. That, like, it's the reason I lived my life. I've never. Ooh. Someone asked me last month, like, have you ever had a? What do you regret? I don't know because literally, yeah, everything else in my life wouldn't be what it is. Like yeah. doing this is going to change yeah. a million things. It's a butterfly yeah. effect. Literally. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any, can you think of anything that makes you feel present in the moment? Mm. Whether that's like sitting on your bed, walking outside, listening driving a car, listening mm. to music. My, uh, my old records. Mm. Yeah. My advice would to just be more of the stuff that makes you feel present. Yeah. So then you can carry that and channel it into other parts of your life. Yeah. For me, it's like yoga and meditation, which has helped me so much. I mean, I only recently started actually practicing it within like the past two years. Yeah. And I don't know. I feel like finding something that worked for me really helped me in other areas too, because that's, I feel like that's a part of being an artist or just yeah. a human that wants better for itself yeah. is you are looking ahead to the next thing yeah. because yeah. it's, our, it's in our innate ability to evolve. Yeah. But finding those practices that are, you know, perfect for us that help us sort and of be music, in the present moment. Yeah. Music too. Like, I feel like I almost used to be critical of myself. Like the only time I could get my like hyper analytical brain to stop was listening to music i'd be i wanted to exist outside of that but then i was like wait well, what if i found like a purpose in music like what if i did more music yeah. so I was like gonna ask. We, yeah, yeah there's gonna probably ask, a lane you, for you do you do music i feel no. like Bruh. do you work with like jay or do, do you sit in on the studio oh yeah and like uh, that's, do you that's enjoy actually it? like yeah that's like one of my favorite things so what about like producing recording. have you ever considered producing i've never produced no Ugh. might be time uh, to start i don't think start. i have to use me that's that's yeah, it, it takes requires. like a crazy amount of patience, and I feel like it, 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 not when you're in your ridiculous. flow, yeah. not when you know the tools, and then you're just you're doing it right. Like yeah. part. Of the, right? Also, though, you're saying you need to practice patience, so yeah. maybe that's exactly what you need to be doing. Yeah, I'm, uh, technically, that's what he is doing. Whenever he sticks through something, yeah, mm. you know, every single time, mm-hmm. it's just focusing on better, that. Better. Pre- patience. Yeah, yeah. Patience well, is something I've always struggled with too. I'd also like to recommend drugs, <laughs> like, like mushrooms, microdosing. <laughs> We could talk about mushrooms. Uh, yeah, I've, I've microdosed before I came here. It's fucking great. Really? I love it. I've never before. Really? Never Goodbye. had that experience. You've never taken mushrooms, period? Mm-mm. Oh, yeah. No, never. We were crazy. actually talking about this in the car right here. <laughs> yeah. I love mushrooms. I've I, never experienced Okay, if I'm on a trip, though, I need to be by myself. I can't Ooh, okay. be around other energy. I just got to, okay. like, whenever I do, like, I guess they call it, like, a hero dose where you're really tripping. I need What's to be that? by myself. I only, I only, like. That's only What's only Lane. I like to see. Drive I can't be around other very, people because like, I'm gonna pick up so much energy mm-hmm. from other people, and then I become focused on their energy mm-hmm. and you why their energy. The environment, I think, yeah. Right way. Well, what is a hero dose? Hero dose is like it's <laughs> like a, a big lot. one. Yeah, a big boy. It's, it's, okay. it's, it's a big, big dose. Bowl. Yeah. Whereas a microdose is like a tenth. Swallowed up by the universe. Yeah. I don't want to vibes. Not like lose myself, but almost like. In the um, music, the moment yeah. you want it, you better yeah, never let it go. go. You only get one, one shot. Do not miss a chance to blow <laughs> this opportunity. opportunity comes once, once in a lifetime. lifetime. You better. Yeah. Nice. Amen. That was great. What I will say about like the same experiences I've had on mushrooms, I've gotten really close to through diligent practice with meditation. Yeah. And music. Oh my gosh, music sometimes has you literally feel felt like it's entered like it. my body, my soul, and just break down sobbing. You guys so should- like. What? What was you that? You guys should watch the Mike documentary. I was. It just came oh, out. Wait, just came Did out. it come out? No, it's been out for a while. The what documentary? Well, they got a, a Hulu series coming out called Mike. Well, that's their old. Um, that's all their old like uh, tour stuff. Oh no! So I'm talking about Mike Tyson. Oh no! You're talking about. <laughs> wait, I saw that. That. <laughs> no, I'm gonna crazy. fucking watch the <laughs> shit out of that. <laughs> wait, who is who? Two different him? mics. What's his name? Two different. Know. <laughs> I can't remember either, but I just saw the the, it looks the dope trailer as shit, for that though. yesterday. There is a new um. A new docu series nice. on Netflix called mm. "How to Change Your Mind." I yeah, I no, fuck I with that. I haven't seen it yeah. yet. I haven't seen no. it yet. But you should watch while we're on the topic, sure. this guy's never done drugs besides alcohol in his life, and yeah, that's quite the life. accomplishment. You seem but... like you like to be in control of things, so doing stuff that makes you out of control makes you uncomfortable. Is that correct? Yeah, there's a large amount of surrender that goes into psychedelics. Well, I don't know, actually. I think you I like to be in control. Okay. Because I, th- I, f- I feel like that's I the case. Maya and ask her. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what's funny? It's FaceTime right now. She Anytime. <laughs> like, I don't give a fuck. 
<laughs> Anytime I've done mushrooms with people who have done it for the first time, they are shocked at what they were told versus what they experience. Yeah. And it, it gets better and better every time of like, I was telling Kayla on the way here, anytime I've done mushrooms, it just feels like I'm like a nine year old again. It feels very natural. Yeah. I just want to chill. I don't care. I'm not like really overthinking stuff. It's like you feel also so in touch hey. with people around you when you're with the right people. Yeah. That you don't really we're, question we're anything. We're shooting the podcast in, right now. Wait, wait, hold on. Wait, who is he talking Can to? Can I say hi to her? Can I say hi to her? I really, really I have love a question. her. This is Maya. Kaylin. <gasps> hi, Maya. Put it up to the mic too, though. Hi. <laughs> nice to meet you, Maya. This is Chloe. Hello. Yeah, we're on the podcast right now. But we do have a question for you. Yeah, we have a question. Do you think I? What was the question? Okay. Are you con- do you like being in control? Do you think I like like being in control? Like, do I have a problem with being in control? Like, not a problem. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you have to be in control. Thank you, Maya. Right. So you know the answer to your problems. Thank you. The answer to your problems is practice not being in control. Because guess what? And you'll what? feel happier. Right. Okay. And then you'll feel more present. <laughs> okay, yeah. thank you. You can't, you can't be in control of life. You can't. Surrender. Surrender. Full circle. Back to what we said. Yeah. <laughs> that's not. I feel like it's not true. Yeah. <laughs> What'd she say? She said sometimes she has an idea. And then if it's like not my idea, then like oh, I'll hate it. That, that's what you guys conversation. Then she said, that, that, like, I'll wait till I think of it. <laughs> I was like, there's no way that's you true. Bro, that is such a like, good babe, girlfriend. Like, like, I, that's just a true. good well, fucking can we companion. Can ask Maya one more question before yeah. she hangs up? What is her, or you, you probably know this. What's her sign? What's your sign? She sends me shit all the time. I don't remember. Babe, what's your sign? Libra. Libra. Oh, yep. So she's the balance yeah, that you need in your life yeah. for when you, you try to control too much. You're the balance I need in Jared's my life Libra. when I try to control Plus, too triple, much. Triple Libra. She said, I know. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> Love, Love you, Maya. Nice yeah. meeting you, Maya. Bye. Maya was officially on the podcast. Wow. Yay. I'm trying to get her on one, actually. You should. She's so shy. Maya <clears throat> is a sweet Okay, okay. She's well, so shy. She- so, you know, when people are like, when you know, you know. Do you think it took you guys some time to know? No. Like, after we started hanging out, like, it regularly? Like, yeah. yeah. We hung out for, like, two months, and then we started dating. Mm, wow. I know what did it. Yeah. She, I, she, uh, she asked me out <laughs> on the 4th of July in okay, 2018. Maya. Wow. 2018? Yeah. I was I was trying to figure out how long, because it feels like forever. But, yeah, four years. years ago. That's a long time. What was preventing you from not four. preventing you? Four. 2019, then. So oh. History. She, took, okay. she took initiative. Yeah. And you were taking time on that. Yeah. Why did you, why, like, are you more reserved in that manner? Concerned um, in that manner? I'm afraid of commitment. And she pushed, but did, control, anyway, did she, control. yeah, did she push you to, like, in a good way? Yeah. Did she push you to a space that was uncomfortable, but ultimately worth it, you feel like? Yeah. Yes, definitely. Three years later, yes. <laughs> wow, three years? Yeah. <gasps> See, that's amazing to me. What's your favorite thing about her? She's very patient. She's everything yeah. I'm not. Mm. Wow. So. She completes him. Yeah. I mean, so in that way, are you guys opposites? But in yes. other ways, are you the same? We do. Like, we we enjoy doing the same things. Like we're both like introverts. Like we don't like doing shit really, and like we connect on that. Mm-hmm. But like, so in a room, are you guys similar in the way you operate with people? No, no. She's very shy, and I'm. I'll talk to anybody. Mm. Yeah, she's like very shy. Like sometimes, like sometimes if I if I take her like around like my friends, she won't like go up and like talk to people. I'll have to like. Pretty much like drag her and like start the conversation and then like try to sneak away. Do you yeah, guys she's think very that there's shy. any real equation then to chemistry in terms of like you hear so many different stories of people who were opposites, people who are like, yeah, we're the same person. Like, w- what do you think it comes I feel, down to? I feel like it, you don't want somebody that's like the same as you. I feel like you should want to be with some want to be with somebody that is like almost like polar opposites. That ch- that do you almost feel like that could make you? feel distant from that person in some way do you think some people seek out people who are the exact same as them yeah definitely i think the willingness to compromise yeah is a big thing that's what love is yeah it's your willingness to compromise this book called the road less traveled changed my life and it's all about love what love really is versus what we're taught and our misconceptions about it and basically the way he described it was is that love is an extension of oneself for the benefit of another person and your own spiritual growth which is essentially compromise of it's not always fun and it's not always easy but if you actually do love the person you're willing to do it anyways because you're you're willing to invest that into your relationship 
and grow as a person even when it's not comfortable because you care about them that much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I think is so beautiful because it really is the compromise. (laughs) Really? But I've been doing it for three years. Proud of you. It's very hard for me though. I think it's hard for me too, but it wasn't until Jared that I was like, whoa, I'm willing to actually work on myself and do this stuff yeah because i don't want to lose you it's like fun in the imperfections because you're going to notice the flaws in everybody around you the longer you spend time with them yeah Mm -hmm. and it's finding somebody that you're like those flaws are starting to be what i love the most about you right and like i'm not in a relationship but that's in my head what i would feel i guess no that's exactly what it is and And that's why it like no go that's why it seems like everyone i ask about who i ask kaylin this question my mom this question like everyone has really healthy relationships because I, I think people a lot of people fear that like what if like I, I all my fears are like blinding me from being with this person and you guys all say the same thing where it's just like you will literally drop everything and in the face of all of those fears still be willing to move forward with that person yeah. so if the fear to uh love ratio of the love outweighs the fear that's how you know it's the mm-hmm. person and my yeah. mom is like badass independent as fuck like taught me how to just do everything on my own like that's always been her and so I asked her, I was like, when you met my dad, was that hard? She was like, when I met your dad, I literally would have dropped everything I was doing. She was a producer at NBC, like in, at the be- at the peak of her career yeah. when they met. And she's like, if he wanted to move to literally like another country, I would literally pack up my bags that moment and go with him. And that's how I knew. I was like, damn. See, that's why I feel like it's so individualistic. Yeah. Sometimes it works if you are really similar. Sometimes yeah. it works if you are polar opposites. I really think it comes down to just a soul tie yeah. Yeah. and how it, it's... I think that's the magic of love is that it's indescribable and you can't, you can't describe it and you can't know it until you, you, you experience never know. it. You never until know. you experience it. You just got to feel like, it. Okay. I think that's what it is. Thank you. I'll write it down. Nice for later. Vibes. I'll about vibes. Thanks, Bags. Yeah. I'll hey. about vibes. I'll about vibes. Look, speaking of books. We, uh, Ooh, nice segue. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Speaking of love as well. I yeah. fall in love with everyone I meet by... I don't know how well, to pronounce your name. Okay. So, this is a good Chloe. This is a good yeah. Chloe. Oh, or that. Or that. Yeah. Clotilda, Chloe. Clotilda. Carrie. Carrie Sabia. Carrie. Uh, no, none of them. Sabia. Uh, Shit. No, right, give no. it a go. Give it a go. I want it up. Give it a go. Cl- Cl- Clotilda. Perfect. S- Sabia. Perfect. Demaro. Perfect. Demaro. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Well, okay, before we go on to this tangent, though, where, what is, like, what is that? Like, where did that come from? So, wow, great question. Great. Kayla knows this is a, this is a, this question a loaded has a question. Of, has a lot of meat to it. Um, so, my name is that. That's my real name. Some people think Clotilde is a stage name. It's not. It's my real name. I went by Chloe my whole life because, like, kids would make fun of Clotilda. My parents had it on like the school roster as Chloe, so I was like, "Do my parents not even?" <laughs> <laughs> like, did they? F- they're like, <laughs> they don't want me to get made fun. They're like, "Yeah, no, we can't." Do it this. went on the social security number, and they were like, "Fuck, yeah. we did that." <laughs> but no, but my <laughs> license, birth, everything's Clotilda. So when my mom was pregnant with me, she really, or before she got pregnant with me, she really wanted a girl because my brother's great. Shout out to my brother Zach. Um, but after him, she really wanted a girl just because she'd always wanted a girl, and so she prayed to my great grandma whose name was Clotilda mm. and said, I'm Italian and said, if you give me a girl, I'll name her after you. So thus I was born and thus she did. And I went by Chloe my whole life. And then I was in acting school like three years ago. And I had a teacher who told us to stand up and say our names. And I stood up and I was like, hi guys, I'm Chloe. And she literally was like, sit back down. She's like, that's, sad. that's not your that's fucking Deborah name. Kim says, you sit there, you sit, you sit. I'm sad. Okay. <laughs> and she said, get back up. And she's like, say it again. And like the way she was looking at me, you could tell. I knew what she meant. Yeah. And so I was like, my name's Clotilda. And she said that, that's the one. If you don't go by that on some level, she said, if you don't go by that, you, you aren't owning who you truly are. Mm-hmm. And I think that this also changes person to person. If you truly feel like you don't identify with your name yeah. based on gender representation, whatever, you change that shit. Yeah. But I feel like I did identify with it, but I shut it down because fear of judgment fear of judgment it's weird it's not an american name it's like it's not normal it's yeah you don't hear it every day yeah and from that point forward i started going by clotilda and i my life changed i mean i'm really into like ancestral connection and things like that and so i think that my great grandma definitely is like an angel of mine and so Mm -hmm. she comes through a lot but then also the things that we're most insecure about if we're embracing those insecurities on a daily basis 
then like over time will grow more confident. And your name is something that you literally have to say mm-hmm. so often. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so it was one of those things that I just started using more and more and more. And now it just rolls off the tongue. I do not care. It creates conversation, but all of that. Um, so I, my first documentary I made was called My Name is Clotilda. And it was all my poetry, actually, and some of my music and me just putting it all out there. And yeah, yeah, that was. I found this from your link tree or whatever. Tree? Yeah. And I was hey, like, shout out. I Not literally, sponsored. I screenshot it and I sent it to him. I was like, you know, she has a book. And he's like, yeah. I was like, why the fuck aren't you telling me shit? Why aren't you telling me things like this? This is so important. Yeah. So, but a very I'm interested. One, might I add. Yeah. But really it's pretty successful it is yeah. rated on love poems on amazon really yep. yeah. it is and it was sold in local book bookstores as well as online really yeah she's my biggest she's your rep right I now know. <laughs> Literally. i'm like let me tell you some clotilde facts oh. so what uh what what does the whole book consist of is it just your poetry and stuff? you to make the book yeah okay i feel like this book is a product of the process of what we're talking about which is like i didn't know i was writing this book I was writing this book. I was literally just actually feeling all these things. So I've always written to like get those things out. Yeah. Words are dope because like you can take your time with them. Words are dope. Words are so cool. Words you can take dope. all the time you want in the world to express exactly what you mean. And I know sometimes people struggle with that in conversation and stuff. And same thing. I always say, even if it's conversation can be weird sometimes, but keep talking to people. Eventually you'll get, you'll get across what you need to get across. Yeah. Words really allow me a place poetry to like really communicate what I feel. Um, and so when I was writing these poems, I didn't know that they would become a book until later on. And I was like, I should make a book. Um, but in terms of like the idea behind the book is like, I definitely like, uh, I love the world so much and I love people so much. And like, I really do fall in love, like with everyone I meet, whether it's romantic or otherwise, really when it's romantic, like it's really, we all get it where it's like, I think people shame themselves for like, really falling for someone and then later on being like uh i don't know if i'm into yeah. this i think what happens is that since we're all the same we experience the essence of each other mm-hmm. right off the bat mm-hmm. we experience the truth but we all have experiences that might not be all that compatible in the end sometimes yeah um or they're perfectly compatible you know some people are like oh it's just it's it's your sex drive that makes you fall in love i don't think that's it i don't think it's chemicals i think that we're just experiencing the truth which is that we all are one mm-hmm. um and so one of my friends who freaking actually a lot of those love poems are about what we were like, we weren't arguing one day, but he's like, you know, I think your problem is that like, you really do just fall in love with everyone you meet. And that's where the title came from. And as soon as he said that, I was like, you, thank you. You. <laughs> thank you. you. And so, <laughs> and, yeah. And so I like, I, after that, I was like, bro, and I don't know what I did. But I went to my room and I started like writing or drawing. And so I, that's when I wrote that down. And Have I you knew, talked to him since you made this? He's one of my best friends. Okay. Yeah. That's dope. So does he know like the story behind he's the like, title? He's like, any royalties on that, bro? Right. I was about to ask. Is he <laughs> say shit? I'll send you an invoice. <laughs> right. Yeah, he's actually dope. One of the most like insightful, dopest people I know. Um, and actually having to be that open was freaking insane to me. I don't care if all of you guys read every word in there about whatever I'm feeling. But for the person that I'm feeling it about, like the whole world could see me rip into a song or unveil all of my emotions. But like the person who it's about, it's like, ah, oh! <laughs> yeah. but it'll only, this shit only brings us closer to each other, you yeah. know? Yeah. And yeah. people are supposed to be in your life should validate your emotions and be like, yeah, like that's, that, that, that makes I sense. I feel that. Mm-hmm. No, I, uh, like every time that I like feel like I'm in love or whatever, I feel that like, that's when I write poetry. Mm-hmm. And so it's like the one person that it's about, that's the only person I'm going to send it to. Uh, so and it's do like you end up, do you send the poems yeah absolutely mm-hmm. i mean how, how, when do when do you feel like it's time to do that to fuck i don't know probably most of the time like <laughs> right you, away no, right. <laughs> <laughs> like Never. Uh, immediately Never. as soon as it's done as soon as i put okay, that yeah, final we just met, no regrets <laughs> yeah. it's one of those you. things where like especially like okay when i talk about this like being an artist and being these really like emotional creative spaces yeah. especially around people you're attracted to People start getting close to each other. Then everyone starts writing songs. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I've written songs about people or people have written songs about me that like, maybe we didn't work out in the end or whatever. But the songs themselves are still the embodiment of the energy Mm -hmm. of love. And it's really cool that we can do that with each other and be comfortable. Yeah, and it's It's, like being the reason. It's proof that we're living. Like that's what life is for. We were just talking about this in the car. 
the beautiful parts and the not so beautiful parts. Like they're both equally as important. So embracing that and yes. creating art out of it, no matter what the story behind it is, is it goes to show that you're doing life right and you're, yeah. you're being human and doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Yes. That, she gave me such good advice on the way here. Thank you. Literally, like I and I want to know your guys' opinion on this. Okay. But like, you you write poetry. Sometimes, yes. Sometimes, Terrence, do you write it all? Mm -mm. Okay. He doesn't know how to write. Um, so, like your opinion on this? Yeah, I was racist. Um, <laughs> but, you got it in. <laughs> nice. Hey, I say it every episode. I missed the last episode. But that was it, a good part to put it in. Yeah, that was, that was mad racist. <laughs> but that's gonna go back. To, all right. As much as I love this book, sometimes I like wonder, of course, like writing about these emotions as much as I was, did that keep me in the emotions? Like whatever. And I just wrote one of my favorite songs, but it's kind of like a sad kind of like love song. And I was telling Kaylin on the way here that I was worried, like, could this keep the situation around in my brain, whatever. Yeah. And she was literally like, this is what you need to like release it. This is you being freaking human. If you write anything else when you're not feeling it, that's what's going to come off as inauthentic and not be good for the world. Cause I'm always right. worried that I'm doing the right thing for the world or I don't want to make anyone sad, this and that. Yeah. But I write my best songs are sometimes my saddest songs mm -hmm. and awesome. she popped i love sad songs the car and i was i know right because they're the most Fucking relatable yeah, it's, it's yeah. real also i said in order to get to the other side of that sadness the happiness you have to let yourself process the mm -hmm. hard part in order to then write happy songs I think about the recovery I, of that i feel like that's why i'm so like i guess like straight edge <laughs> like i don't like drugs and i didn't like start drinking until like i moved down here because like I feel like people use those things a lot of the time to mm -hmm. run from what they're mm -hmm. feeling. And then it's, it's like a never ending race. Like you're never going to outrun it. You're just kind of yeah. yeah. do drugs because you're doing good, not because yes. you're doing bad yeah. to feel yes. better. Listen, balance. Life is balance. all about yeah. balance. And with some substances, that balance, the the scale is even heavier when it's yeah. tipped. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Absolutely. But it took so me like just going to running. those extremes, though. This is the Miley Cyrus interview. Hey. It was like, Let me hear I would it. recommend everyone go to an extreme with wherever mm -hmm. they feel compelled to go so that they know what that reality looks and feels mm -hmm. like for them. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, sometimes you can have this thing riding on you or this temptation riding on you your whole life. Whereas, like, I know what constantly running away from my emotions looks and feels like. Yeah. I used to smoke after anything felt heightened or I felt anxious. Yeah. And I was a very, I, like, made a story about this yesterday on Instagram where, like, I found a picture on my photo booth yesterday. Oh, I replied to that. I replied to that. <laughs> That's freaking sick up, bro. Yeah. Where like I used to like any object in my path when I was angry, it's hit, it's getting yeeted at the wall. Like over, <laughs> over. This is not something I do anymore. But like that's because now when I have an emotion, I go on a walk most of the time. I'm still human. I'll still yeah. go out sometimes, drink like whatever it is. But like most of the time, on the spot, what do I need right now? Do I go on a walk until I figure that thing out? Whereas like when we co consistently run away, these things will build up to where they, they are explosions, mm -hmm. which is sometimes so important for us to feel. Mm -hmm. There's no right way to emote. I don't know. But yeah, I do agree with that. Yeah, definitely. I agree too. Like that's where like a lot of my control comes from. Because mm -hmm. I, used, I used to like have really bad anger issues. Like I had to go to like therapy for it. Mm. So like going to therapy for it. And this was in like middle school. Crazy because like, like you're so, you're so calm. Your yeah. energy is so calm. Like definition of equilibrium. Yes, seriously. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, I feel like that's why like I try to control so much because like I want to be in control of my emotions so mm -hmm. I don't ever have to like feel like I'll the feel way I used again. to feel. What do you, what do you, what do you fear in feeling that again? Um, I guess losing the person I am now. And like going back to like how I was before, which is like just really, relapsing, basically, yeah, pretty much on the emotions. I don't know that you can, really, I think that because you've touched who you are now, yeah. Even if you go there, you it's just it's them. a scary thought though. You'll, yeah, you'll just snap back to who you are so quickly because you've experienced the essence of your, of yeah. your being now. Yeah. You know, does that make sense? No, it, make, it makes perfect sense, but it's like it's still scary. You know? Of course, it's still right. again scary. though the balance. It's yeah. good to have control in certain areas, yeah, like that. But then you can kind of like observe the other areas where you're over controlling, maybe a little bit where you don't need to be. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But yeah, I understand it's, it's that. A equilibrium, it's everyday struggle. Equilibrium, equilibrium. <laughs> Serendipitous equilibrium. Those are the words of the podcast. Dichotomy. And two, two, two. And dichotomy. Anal. Hey, you motherfucker. <laughs> I was yeah, about to say that. I, I say dichotomy in every podcast. Okay, so dichotomy, what? you can educate me on that one. Because I'd I be, I be using it. I'd be I using it. You just said you say that like on every podcast? Is it like, di the uh, what's the monopoly? Give me your fucking phone. I don't, I don't, 
Uh, dichotomy is the opposite. It's contrasting. It's contrasting. It's, yeah, okay, opposite. It's just a contrast. Okay. I taught him that. Okay. Yeah, he cool. taught me that. That's no, why he was about to look it up. Okay. Oh, well, dichotomy. I'll, I'll throw that oh. one in later in a sentence. I'll try to. <laughs> yeah, babes. Yeah, babes. Are we still good? Oh, okay. Just making cool. sure we're we're good to go. Talking cool. Rolling. Cool. All right. It's kind of backwards, but I do have a question. Like, where are you from? <laughs> oh, well, I guess we've never talked about that, no, have I, we? I, so I, have I no am from my dreams, honestly. A very. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it. Tilda's dreams. Seriously, she manifested me. We manifested um, each other. Fabricated me. I am from a really small town that's the same size as Marshall, outside of St. Louis on the Illinois side. It's called mm. Troy, Illinois. Oh wait, the heard car of it. Washes. I used to go there all the time. Car washes? He's yeah. a big car wash fanatic. Wait, I'm like, he'll just travel all over. I worked at Club Car Wash for a long time, and there's a, there's, uh, I got sent out there a few times. Are you thinking Troy, Missouri? Yeah, because there is a Troy, Missouri. Because yeah, I don't think is. we have a Club yeah, Car I Wash. Say, yeah, I am actually. See, so, see, yeah. Troy, Missouri is even more popping than Troy, Illinois. Oh, Troy, God. Illinois is small farm town. It's Marshall. <laughs> Basically, Marshall. Um, everyone knows everyone. And yeah, I'm just, I'm from a really, really, really small town that I am grateful for because Absolutely. it shapes me into who I am. Um, shape. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. This whole um, podcast is just me like <laughs> you guys supporting, are Y'all are just supporting yeah. each other. The most hype to for <laughs> each you. other. Like Thank you. you. Uh, yeah. We ride. We ride. We ride we for ride. everyone in our lives though. Absolutely. A- everyone in general. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Oh. Yeah, this is just bringing us closer together. See, right <laughs> community, friendship. <laughs> Why are you acting like that? But yeah, really Sorry. small town, very white. I think I was like one of ten black students yeah. in my graduating class of like three hundred something. Super relatable story. Yeah, I was. I, we've never talked about this, but yeah. I, I, I could, I could guess that Marshall was very similar. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. One of the mo- the biggest reasons I'm most grateful for it was because. I grew up in a tight community and the small town feel that I'm very grateful for. But growing up in that, when I went to Mizzou and I got to experience a whole other, a whole other different type of living yeah. with so many different kinds of people, I feel like I really, really, really flourished. Like I was in, I was in such a mindset for so long, for such a lengthy part of my life that when I reached college and I opened myself up to all of that, it was like, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Did you feel like you fit in where you grew up? Did you feel like you were different? I always felt as though I was the odd one out because I, I, I felt different and I knew I was different in certain aspects. But growing up in that environment taught me how to conform, which as yeah. with everything can be a very good thing or a very bad thing. Yeah teaches you how to be the chameleon exactly and i love that part of myself because i feel as though i can relate to a lot of people and i can go into that chame- yeah, chameleon yeah because i'm mode. relating heavily right now <laughs> right yeah. and so and it's so interesting because like i said on one hand i love that part of myself yeah but when i got to mizzou and i immersed myself into a different more diverse bigger community I, I learned a lot about myself and I learned about a lot of parts of myself that I was suppressing for so long that I didn't yeah. even know existed because I just wanted to conform. I didn't want to be now. I'm like, I want to be the different one. I, I, I want to stand out. I want to be unique. I love, I love that. But whenever you're young and you're a kid and you, Absolutely. you grow, no, one around, no one around you is doing it. Right. You know anything else. And you, you just, you try your hardest yeah. to fit in. To not draw attention to yourself. Exactly, exactly. And so, I don't know. I feel like I'm still processing and on... What's the word I'm looking for? Ongoing. Unpacking. Unpacking. A lot of parts of myself and a lot of things that I went through. Because, yeah, I just... I, I conformed for so long that I think it caused me to, like, grow a little insecure of who I really am. And so yeah. I'm still learning to be confident in myself in a lot of different areas. Yeah. But, I'm again, I'm grateful for that because I, I feel like I'm just a flower that's bloomed so much since I've I've explored and yeah. expanded. And you love the process. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You said your experience was similar in Marshall. Yes, very. Well, up until, like, a certain point. So I want to say, like, all through middle school, I definitely was, like, me conforming. And then, like, once I got to high school, I was just very bitter. 
and like just mm-hmm. an angry child. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just like it's pretty much just like trying to figure out who I was and like what I was doing and like why am I doing these things? Why am I like hanging out with these people? Mm-hmm. I don't have anything in common with these people. So it's like mm-hmm. after a while, I just stopped hanging out with like that group of people and started hanging out with like the people that like I had more in common with. How what? And it's like that transition was like at once. Like what? Because that can be a really scary one because you don't know at that age yeah. if you're ever going to find friends after you leave certain friends. Yeah. Like, you're not aware of, of that yet. Well, I knew I knew I didn't want to be friends with, like, the people that I was, like, hanging out with because it was, like... Because of doing, how you felt around them? Yeah, and, like, they were in high school. I, like, I didn't drink. I didn't smoke. And they, like, doing all of that. And I was, like... I, They're, like, come on, pussy. Yeah. Do like, it. Much. And I was, like, I don't <laughs> want to be around these kind of people. And it was, like, peer pressure never works on me. So, like... Same. Yeah, you I mean, what the f- fixed. yeah? What yeah. the fuck are people gonna do to this guy? Look yeah. at him. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like, it was just I very mean, annoying. Then it was like after a while, I just started hanging out with like the air quote nerds, or like the the. Thank you. <laughs> you can tell it. It's oh, an you, honor. Were you talking yes, about me? Oh, uh, he never talks you about me. You don't even watch anime. I watched Dragon Ball Z. I just Dude, fucking told our, you. Our, our friend Danny, our friend Danny, we were playing. Um, Max? We're not really strangers. Danny, not too long Danny ago. Danny oh, Max. Yeah. We're not really strangers. Yeah, yes. You okay. Their, so. Girl's last video. Yes. Okay. You're right. He is amazing. We were playing. We're not really strangers. And the card that he drew, that one of us drew, was like, "What were you surprised to find out about me when you first met me?" And one of the things he says, he was like, that you're a low key nerd. And I was like, that's the best compliment that you could ever give For me. For real. Yeah. Ever yeah. give me. Yeah. Yeah. Can't be coming through with the random facts 24 7. Like, <laughs> well, I all, also <laughs> always, well, I heard on this one thing and it's the best. It's the best. I feel like, especially with what you were talking about before, I just want to like quickly make a point because you brought up that point earlier. And I was like, that's so true. Bring it Kaylin home. is like literally like the first to like walk in a room and literally like blow away the room. Like everything, whole outfit Thank down you. to a T, like everything just like, I Thank mean, you. I don't know. There's so much intention, yet it's so different at the same time. But mm-hmm. then also be able to literally talk to anyone in the room and meet Thank them where you. they're at and like figure out a way to relate to them. And she genuinely listens to people. Yeah. She's so present when she talks to people and she will make someone her entire world for like the two minutes she's talking to them. And it's like, so she walks in the room and you're like, oh my God, you're blown away by her presence. <laughs> But then also she meets you, everyone, where they're at. And it's so, it's, thank you. you just make everyone feel so seen. Yeah. I safe. appreciate that, sister. Yeah. Thank you. I mean that. Thank so you. So I feel like that balance of like being different than, I, let's not even use the word conforming. Like I love the word chameleon or, chameleon. or matching people's energy or whatever it is. Like, You're just able to make people feel comfortable. Shape shifter. Yeah. Shape shifter. We love but, that. Why don't you talk about me like that? Like, like what? Oh, he do be. Well, he do be. I heard He's, it. You got the in mic. his own yeah. way. Yeah. In his own way. Sometimes that it's just never so good enough. <laughs> <laughs> He's just giving you shit. He's a Scorpio. He's a little fiery. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. True, true, true. It's funny that you say that about my clothing because I feel like because I kind of just wanted to blend in as a person, my personality, the my favorite way to express myself, as I said earlier, was through clothing. Yeah. And I felt like I could make myself be seen without having to like speak or be super assertive by what I wore. So like I I could let my clothes sort of speak for myself and my personality. Well, they be speaking. Thank they you. Be Thank you. Screaming. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. But you also do that through your personality. Like the reason Kayla and I started a podcast, I feel like is because anywhere we'd go together when we were in college, whether it was like freaking i don't know random random people we met i don't know now making it sound like we're, like we're going home with random people <laughs> well we made friends when we make friends and we were in rooms talking together like kaylin is like the best storyteller one of the best entertainers. thank you i say the same thing about you Bro, but that's why i feel like we recommend another right. we gotta, do we gotta step up our game do better what the fuck no are you everyone's about? love language is <laughs> yeah. unique to them and there's yeah. such a grounded chemistry between you guys yeah there's a support there's like a a really strong yeah. silent bond that you could just yeah. feel without yeah. you having to say anything. Yeah, absolutely. We need to tell them about the soul gazing. Oh, okay. So we did oh. a lot of different practices for spiritual growth and healing, as yeah. I mentioned. And one of them was called soul gazing. You got you partnered up with a random person. You sit on each other. And you had to stare at each other. And you just had to stare at each other. Two and you couldn't minutes. break contact two minutes straight with this person that you did not know. Majority of the, the people there were crying yeah, and like really crazy. communicating Dude, without yeah. saying words. I've seen videos of this. It's yeah. it's a it's you a have, beautiful experience. You have moments that are strange where you kind of start to like mm-hmm. which eye should I look at, mm-hmm. and then you lock in, mm-hmm. and then you come maybe come back to like which eye should I look at, but then you lock in, mm-hmm. and what you feel and what you see is like 
violating in the most beautiful way mm -hmm. of like it's you, like stripping you down of yeah. all of your insecurities yes. because you're not normally face to face with somebody for that long no. well what do they say eyes are the windows to the soul yeah cliche but it's so true i was standing with this woman and i felt like i had seen her whole life story and all the strength that she had to carry with her throughout it and by the end we're both crying and it, I, I by the end i felt like i knew her prior to that two minutes ago i didn't i didn't even know her name yeah it was it was really cool. So highly suggest maybe as like a friendship building practice, y'all could soul gaze. You guys should soul gaze. We could all soul gaze for them. <laughs> they just soul gaze for the Okay guys, so we'll take it. over here. We'll take yeah. over. Hey guys. Um <laughs> welcome to Call it Cliche. Hello vibes. Hello vibes. <laughs> You want to go How for chat? Feel? How'd it feel? His, his facial expression, I can't do. See? Okay, see, you would have to, you would, you would have fallen out too early. I know. You have to be persistent you with another, it. You yeah. can't look away. I love you. Look at him. Wow, Kyle's, Kyle's pretty comfortable. I love he's you so much. With it, Kyle says a lot about. He's you. taking it seriously, Terrence. Come on, bro. I'm trying, but he's making his stupid face on purpose. <laughs> oh. This is just purpose. my face. No, you're not no, even, see? you're not even doing eye contact. <laughs> he's like, making his... Come on, Terrence, stay there. You can't break it, brother. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's okay if you laugh. laugh. It. Yeah. <laughs> then you're all good. We start doing guided yeah. soul, uh, soul gazes. I'm crying no, right now. <laughs> Wait. Keep doing it. No. no. Oh, shit. You can blink. If that's oh, that yeah, why you're crying. Oh, fuck. Because he, no, he, like, he, he wasn't blinking. I'm crying. crying. <laughs> no. Blink, brother. Blink. I think it could be emotion at the same time. <laughs> <Get> <laughs> All right, we're gonna have to finish this up oh, another yeah, yeah, time, yeah, yeah, yeah. but but sure. yeah, no, I feel it. I Good feel segue. it. Holy Isn't shit! Isn't that beautiful? I just, I just came. Right. We we edited, but without them saying it was them staring into eyes. Yeah, like I just, just cry, bro. Yeah, no. Wasn't that beautiful? Was it actually? Was it? Yeah, no, was I, emotion? I think I was blinking. He I don't was, know. I was caught up. Blinking. See, wow. You, you shut. The hey, your your soul starts to emote before your brain can catch up. Yeah. Isn't it's it, on the other cheek, other cheek, yeah. Isn't no, it crazy? Like, oh, oh. like what you can yeah. tell from eyes, though. Like I feel like yeah. I know you guys just from your eyes, honestly. Mm -hmm. And like one of my qualities that I look for in people is kind eyes. Mm -hmm. you, just tell so much. you can, you can. Also, so important. Jesus. That's why it's so important to make eye contact with people, especially yeah. you don't. Yeah. Know. I find myself like sometimes just you know if you're walking by somebody, just your your instinct is almost to avoid it. Yeah. But I'm like, no, Kaylin, just look at them. Yes. Just you know what I'm working on. Because I got to the point where, like, I love Fuck. smiling at everyone I see when I walk. But I'll notice myself do this thing where I smile. And as soon as I smile back, I look down. But, like, I want to make yeah. it. It's not that I look down before and I avoid them. But it's like, do we hold this? It's like holding a smile. Well, I feel that. Does it make I, sense? No, it totally does. And, like, I feel that. But as, like, a guy yeah. looking at a girl in, in that mm. sense, it almost, if it's like there's this, like, boundary that yeah. you try to respect in a yeah. sense. Yeah. yeah. So that's where, it, like, it gets hard to just. Claps that's for you for even being aware. respectful enough. Yeah, Pretty thanks. safe spaces. We the, love that. Walking. We don't avoid them all together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. <laughs> I'm going to look. And if they look at me, I'm going to be like, oh, shit, sorry. Yeah. Right. It's interesting <laughs> to hear from your perspective because that's just yeah. something that I wouldn't even think yeah. of, obviously. But sometimes I can feel it. On, on, it's like I want to have that exchange, but I can feel them being aware of that, which is which, which is, is really appreciated. Awesome. Appreciated. Yeah, appreciated. You know the, the worst thing though. What <laughs> is when you're in the gym and like a girl shows up in the gym and like she like maybe works out next to you mm. and like mm -hmm. you make eye contact in the mirror. It's like. Now she thinks I'm like, uh, oh, in the mirror. Well, yeah. especially now she, like, now the she thinks gym, I'm a fucking weirdo. The gym, y'all <laughs> ever seen that um <laughs> scene from Mean Girls where the cafeteria turns into like a, a food fight, an animal kingdom? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. that's kind of what the gym gives oh off. It does. Like the 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 pheromones and like the intensity of it is heightened because it's a gym <laughs> testosterone you know what, specifically. That's what drives my workouts, like the performers. Yeah, yeah definitely. That's cute, cute outfit. And it's a performance. Yeah. It is. But I think that's also why it can seem so for women yeah. like intense. And yeah. even if that's not the actual case with the person, it, you kind of just yeah. go in with that mentality. Yeah. Well, I, I feel like uh, from my perspective, if there are a lot of females in the gym, mm -hmm. like it drives my workout for some reason to that's go innate. even harder. That is innate. Yeah. yeah. It's literally like survival of like, yeah. who will mate with me so we yeah. can evolve the human right. species. Which, like and that. that's why I'm like, I can't look at you right now either. Which I'm is sorry. so respectful. Very yeah. respectful. So thank you. Yeah. Try to be. Try but, to be. Um, but if Terrence was there, I I'd be making anybody. eye contact with him all day long. See, I did high, soul I do gazing have, in the gym. Um, I talked about this with two of my friends. 
two of my male friends were like, we want to be respectful so we don't approach the women we're interested in. And I'm like, these are beautiful humans with beautiful souls. They're attractive humans. I'm like, you guys, if it, it there's ways to do it and it's the energy behind mm. it to where like you, cause women on some level also love to buy the right person where the energy is there, yeah. be the one who's being approached, courted. Be yeah. and be courted. There's a difference between that and an, an aggressive energy of like being I'm, conquered. Being conquered. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny to me because it's yeah. true. It's yeah. true. So I always say, like, so my friend took my advice and he ended up like approaching a girl and they ended up going on a date and like, at the gym for a bit. No, it was, it was at oh, a okay. coffee shop. Okay. I was like, she might be waiting for you to come in and say something, whatever it is. And I love that we're now also aware. Mm. I think on some level too. Yeah. I think it's important men know that intuitive when you're like you guys are obviously highly intuitive too. So like maybe not everyone has this same intuition. Yeah. And you'll know when to back off or when to keep, go forward and like trust that. Mm -hmm. But don't fall back altogether because you could lose out on a really good yeah. connection. Right. Yeah. All about the intention. And yeah. the intention will convey through that. You're good people. You going with good intentions? No, just Jessica back Jessica. on the like the gym and all of that. Like, yeah. is that a place to try to pick up girls? Like, mm, would you depends. like approaching a female at the gym and just being like, "Hey, I noticed you." Like, what would you, you do listen, in that situation? You couldn't pay me. I personally Again, I think it just all comes down to the intention and the energy behind it. Yeah. If it's like inauthentic, <clears throat> You took me by surprise and I feel so compelled to come up to you that I just have to do it right yeah. now. Yeah. I can feel that and I won't be turned off by it. But if it's if, if there's a creepy vibe to it and the yeah. intentions behind like, it hey, aren't good. I've been watching I'll, you this entire yeah. time from the treadmill yeah. behind you. And yeah. she's yeah. like, damn, your ass You're is so fat. Yeah. So omni aware. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything going on all at once. I mm -hmm. can tell you who is looking at me at all times. Mm -hmm. It's just something that like we and I don't know, you guys do you guys feel that when you're being watched? Yeah. On yeah. some level? Yeah. So uh, like, it could be in my know. imagination, though. Like, I, I don't know. I feel like, too, like, us as humans, we are able to create that connection with people without speaking. Mm -hmm. So it's like, we yeah. can act on it first. Absolutely. Some people would be really tapped out, and it's just like a one-way street, and that for sure happens. And I'll always Fuck. be, like Kaylin said, empathetic towards that. Yeah. And I'll just be like, nah, I'm good. But when if the vibe is there, two people will happen to know at the mm -hmm. same time, and they'll just slowly start to move towards each other. Yeah. So, like... Less about the place, yeah. more about the intention. I, you guys, we got to close this out. Yeah, but we could talk. Forever. Do you guys have anything else you want to say? Uh, this camera, um, this camera, this camera. What are you guys actually going on say in your it lives to that right camera now? right here? Uh, yeah, that camera. You are so loved. Mm. You are so special, and you have people around you. Even if you might not think, there are people out there who are just like you, who are there to help you. And if you learn anything from this, is that. Friendship is important. Community is important. Absolutely. Love's important. And you're special. You're unique. You're needed. You're wanted. You're so seen. On. Yes. And if there is a desire in you, it means it's for you. Just take one step towards it. Mm. And you will set something in motion that will literally not stop no matter how much you try to make it stop. Mm -hmm. it will. It, your desires will tackle you to the fucking ground. World star, fucking smack down on the street. So just, but just move a stone. Move one stone. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, Thanks, bye. That's our podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, all that good shit. Go buy, uh, go, go buy this book. Yeah. Oh. Go check it out. Yeah. Uh, we'll put your guys's like links and stuff in the. Yeah. So go link tree to her Instagram. Hey. You can buy it from there. Uh, Kindle and paperback. I actually just added Kindle. Yeah, I saw not, that. Not that long ago. But hey, Kindle. Yeah. You want the raw authentic too, so yeah. get that paperback. All right. Paperback. Shop Yvonne Mitchell. All right. Yes. Yeah. Mitchell. We out. Take care. All right. Yeah. Uh, we need to get a thumbnail. thumbnail. Yes. Thumb also, can I take a photo of you two really quick? On my yeah. Yes. Yes. Let me take on my phone. A one, two, three.